Cheers, buddy. Oh, dear me. Woohoo! Another delivery. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to the channel. My name's Gareth. This is Tech Check. Something slightly different this week. A fully built PC on the desk. Nothing like uh, we normally do. But with that being said, subscribers reached out to me and said, I've got a really nice PC build. I don't think it's performing as good as it could do. I've seen a couple of all-in-one coolers rather than this CPU tower cooler that I've got now. Would you be interested in installing it for me? I said, absolutely no problem at all. So we're gonna perform a step-by-step -step instruction of how to install this H1 Elite LCD from Corsair, 240 mil all-in-one in this Johnsbo Mod 5 case. It could do with a slight clean and if we've got time, we'll tidy up some of the cables as well. So stick with me. Before we actually go uninstalling anything or cleaning anything or anything like that, I think it would be a good opportunity to actually hook up a monitor and just run a few Cinebench scores, test this CPU, what temps are we currently getting at this moment in time, and then once we've installed this 240mm cooler, we can do the same test again and I can show you whether it was an actual worthwhile money spent or was it purely for aesthetics? Let's find out. So at standard setting guys, no Ryzen master running, no overclocks on this 3950X whatsoever. Purely with this standard AMD tower cooler, we've got a max temperature of 77 degrees on a 10 minute multi-core run and our top temperature is 17.848 in Cinebench R23. I'm now going to show you how to install this H100i Elite LCD 240 all-in-one. We're gonna remove it, we're gonna give it a good clean, we're then gonna install it, and we'll do the exact same test again and see whether we benefit from a reduced temperature and potentially a bit more performance as well. So I've laid this computer on its side, guys, because it's bloody massive and I can't fit it in the shop. First thing we've got to do is remove uh, the PWM connection from our tower to our CPU header. So we'll take that one off. There we go, so that one's off. Next step is at the back of this tower cooler, you've got a lever. And what we need to do is you need to pull this lever all the way to one side, which will release the mechanism off of the socket. You can then give it a slight twist like that and lift one side, that's fine. And then we should, but there we go. So essentially you've got this side here and this side here, which literally hangs on to these two hooks. This one will release first. You can give it a slight nudge left to right, and then you should be able to remove it off of this back one. Be mindful of these copper heat pipes because they may still be warm. So there we are guys, practically brand new, no issues, no problems. And like I said, on the back, we don't want to actually touch any of these pins. We want to get it nicely and firmly back into the socket. So triangle to triangle. There we go. And then we can return the retention arm back into place and lock it into the socket. Three, there we go. So we can get these two case fans out of here now. And as you can see, guys, they are, this is after they've been blown out as well. So we need to give this a real good clean here uh, before we think about installing anything else. Right, these front fans are looking a damn sight cleaner, which is good, positive. Right, let's move on to this cooler then and let's see if we've got clearance on that mount up there. Oh, right. So, 240 mil, all-in-one LCD Elite cooler. So it does come with these Elite fans, look really, really nice. I'm hoping that we have got chance to do push-pull because it's going to look a little weird with, well, eight of these, six of these fans in the case and then these two taken out, so eight in total, and then two fans which are totally different. So I'm hoping and we'll be able to do the Corsair fans underneath and then the actual radiator and then those fans on top in a pull configuration. So hopefully exhausting the heat rather than pushing cool air in. Uh, what we should be having is cool air coming from the front, cool air coming from the bottom and then exhausting heat through the top, giving that natural flow of air. 
It also does come with a Commander Core as well. These are absolutely fantastic, guys. So six RGB fans, six PWM connections as well. Perfect. It's also got, if you're struggling for USB 2 headers on your motherboard, you connect one here and then it's got a splitter for USB 2. We've got all of our mounting hardware. We've got our AM4 bracket, which is here, which is perfect. It does come with Intel and TR4 as well, but we're not going to use those. We can put them away. And then we've got our radiator and our CPU pump. Standard 240 mil radiator, guys. Um, really nice finish, all in black, nice finish overall. And then it comes pre-mounted with the Intel hardware as well. So we need to go ahead and take that off. Please be mindful that as soon as you remove the Intel back bracket, or back plate, then this protector here, you need to be careful with the CPU paste unless you're gonna remove it and apply your own. Then in terms of obviously the cables which are coming off of this, you've got a three pin which goes onto your CPU header. You've got a USB uh, connection which either plugs into a USB 2 header on your motherboard or if you've got no one of them headers, you can take one out and use the splitter. And then you've got a 24 pin pr uh, proprietary connector, which pushes into the top of the commander core as well, so that you can control the GIFs or any kind of LCD element on this screen as well. So what we've done here, guys, is we've removed these side panels off the top of the actual case. We have then placed our radiator on top of the actual mounting. And what we're gonna have to do is we're going to be mounting our all-in-one onto our socket. We're then putting two of the Corsair fans underneath here in a push configuration. And then we're gonna be putting the other two fans on top of the actual radiator in a pull configuration. First of all, is we're gonna get our radiator positioned with our two Corsair fans underneath. We're then going to be using the long screws to go through the fan and then through the case and then into the actual radiator itself. One thing to note here, guys, we do want to ensure that when we are installing these fans on the actual radiator, the cables are coming out of this side, and we do also want to make sure that it is pushing air up and out of the case. So the bad news comes even more, guys, because even though I can get these two particular screws in here, there's absolutely no way I can get those two particular screws down there without taking the motherboard out. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Ultra careful, oh, there we go. Let's see if we can now go ahead and install our all-in-one. So I just want to tighten this one slightly just so I can keep the radiator in place. There we go. And then we can go ahead and put in some more of our longer screws. There we go, fantastic. Right, what we want to do now is just get our eight pin out of the way and what we can also do is feed through these cables to the back while we've got plenty of room so as we said previously guys we've got our proprietary 24 pin connector which is there and then we've also got a usb 2 connection which is here which needs to go to a header on our motherboard so this cable here We'll go to a USB 2 header, which is located just here, straight onto here. And then we've got this one, which is our CPU header, which goes onto our CPU header, which is there. And then our 24 pin plugs into our commander core. There we go. And then we can again just push the excess through to the back of the case and we can pull that through and around at a later stage. So now that we've attached our CPU header to our motherboard, guys, what we wanna do is go ahead and remove the proprietary AM4 connections on our socket. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this top side first, like that. Remove this. We want to screw each one of these into one of the actual screws that's holding our back plate in place. So take off your cover remove the bracket for Intel by just pushing one left and one right, like so. And then these are actually named guys. So this is the right hand side one. So what we can do is we can just go ahead 
and push this one on from the right. Like so, and then this one on the left. Like so, we're gonna take off this CPU paste here anyway, and I want to apply some decent uh, CPU paste just to make sure that we're gonna have a good connection. We'll go ahead and we'll put a decent blob in the middle. And then what we can do guys is very, very straightforward. All we're gonna do is turn this around, pop it onto each one of these pillars. And like I said previously, we're just gonna screw it down using the four thumb screws. Once you get one on guys, just don't tighten it too much. What you want to do then is you want to go ahead and put the opposite corner on. We are there or thereabouts, which is all good. So let's go ahead and get these other two fans on in this uh, pull configuration here. Again, we want to cable manage these, so the cables are coming off of this side. So essentially, once we uh, have installed it, guys, we, it makes it much, much easier for us to uh, cable manage it. So dead straightforward. Again, we're going to be using the long screws these ones here, not the short ones, because we're not gonna be able to go through the fan into the radiator if we don't use the long ones. So there's no pretty way of really doing this, guys, without me actually redoing the whole cable management, but we're not going to do that. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna open our commander core. So it comes, guys, with a bit of 3M tape that you can put on either side. So we'll go ahead and do that now. There we are, just there, like that. You remember beforehand when I said we've got one RGB and one PWM. Now in terms of the PWMs, it doesn't make any difference where those ones go. You can just plug those into, let's say number one and number two. But the RGB connections, guys, do make a massive difference. So if you want them to be in sync, even though there's only two fans, two cables. So this one's gonna be number one on this side and then this one's going to be number two on this side. So essentially two RGB, two PWMs, all good. We've then got our 24 pin connector identified by this gray mark up here, which pushes into the top of this particular commander core, like so. And then we have got our USB two, which runs round to the front of our PC, along with our USB 2 from our commander core. This is guys where if you haven't got two USB 2 headers on your motherboard or you've already used one for your front IO, you can actually shove both of these into those for those there and then you're only using one of them. So what we're gonna do now guys is we've got two USB 2 headers down at the bottom of our case and we're gonna make both of those connections. One of them is for our commander core and the other one is for our USB for our LCD screen. So first one we can plug on to the bottom down here and then just to the left of it, we can plug on that one as well. There we go. And then we can pull the excess through to the back of the case. Likewise for any cable that's on the front as well. And then we can basically just tidy it up as nice as we can and put all the panels back on, get the graphics card in and we're good to go. So we're back again, guys. Back with this 240, all installed in a push-pull configuration, quiet settings, around 800 RPMs. We didn't install uh, IQ, so we couldn't control the fans. I just wanted to see what it would be at stock. 10 minutes, multi-core, R23 on Cinebench, and our results are unbelievable. So as you would expect, our max CPU temperature was actually 59 degrees. Now, comparing that to 77 with the stock AMD CPU cooler, a massive, massive difference. So, humongous decrease there. Now, the best thing about it is we scored a nine, well, 17.848, and we've now scored a 23, 23, 174. So again, a humongous increase in terms of the score by basically just improving our cooling. So the main takeaway from this guys is a 17 degree drop in terms of CPU temperatures, a massive performance increase in terms of 
obviously score and then you get the added benefit of the extra aesthetics that Corsair has brought to the market with this H100 Elite LCD. In my opinion, it's absolutely stunning. My favorite RGB software, which is IQ. I know at times it can be a little temperamental, but I still believe it's the best one that's on the market at this current moment in time. Um, I love the fans that come with this uh, Elite Cooler as well. Easy to install, so I'm hoping that the guide that I provided will help you install it into either a new build that you're potentially looking at or obviously the existing systems that you've currently got at this moment in time as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've got some value out of it. If you have, smash that subscriber button, leave a fat thumbs up and guys, enjoy your weekend. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.